my Facebook chat. <laughs> People Hi. sign up. Hi. Bless some kisses. I'm alive still. <laughs> hello, hello everybody. We are here with the fabulous Jenny Baird for our last Facebook live chat of 2017. We've saved the best for last. Hi everyone. Hi fans of Plasticle Homes. So great to see you. Please ask me whatever it is that you your heart desires. Go for it. There you go. So start I've got some questions here that you guys have been putting in over the weekend. We've had lots of lots of juicy questions come in. Um, but keep posting questions on the comment section and we'll try and get to as many of you as we can. But first, let's unpack this week's episode. Um, Lie Deep, which is aptly named. Um, we finally had Regina's body delivered to the hospital. after. So the everybody can rest assured that I am dead, <laughs> dead. and I'm not coming back. No. I, I, haven't been, I haven't done a jewel yet. You know, um, you know what, though? Bevan could bring in like a zombie apocalypse situation. <laughs> we don't ever know where Bevan's going to go, so we can't rule Even out. Even though I've lost my lungs? We can't rule that out. We can't. We never know where it's going to go. That's interesting. There's so many okay. twists and turns. Don't anyone think that I've just specifically said that there's going to be a zombie apocalypse sort of place As far home. as I know. I, but, I, um, I'm, I, Regina has passed. Away. Regina's dead. Um, but we found out in this episode that, in fact, Regina's death wasn't a drowning because she was, in fact, dead before she... Um, the hit the water, which is speculating to, to yeah. murder. As there was no water in her lungs when they did the autopsy, which is why we had to see her lungs. I'm sorry about that gruesome detail. <laughs> and then we finished the episode with Dickie, or Sir Richard, being arrested for her murder, which I think made a lot of people quite happy and excited. Well, he had motive, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, he did say he ought to kill me. But well, we don't know. Stop really referring to myself as my character and try and get some <laughs> separation. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't know. I mean, there's a lot of speculation that it's Dicky. I would think he's the number one suspect. Yeah, you would think for that, this you? murder. But yeah. Reggie prior to her redemption days did make a lot of enemies. I did make a few enemies. It's true. It's true. So, but she did try hard to also make amends. You she know, really did. Some of those deaths were not premeditated. She wasn't all bad. No, and I think what was interesting was the scene actually with Sarah where Reggie is talking about what's next, what's from, what's from here. And, it, you know, she's made her redemption. She's worked so hard to prove that. Yep. She is sorry for all that she's done. She's worked so hard to gain all the Bly's trust again, which is, you know, you would think would actually be an impossible task. You would, actually. I mean, it's funny. When, when Bevan said to me at the beginning of the season that he was going to send her good... I was like, you know, no one's going to believe her. <laughs> no one. <laughs> because it's funny, when I played Regina in season, all the seasons up, you know, one through four, it's not like I ever played the lie. She's, she was a, a great kind of, she always wore masks and she was never, you know, she was duplicitous. But I never played that. I always was like, right, this is a scene coming from Reggie's heart. This is how I'm going to play it. And the context is what did it, really. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm just going to play the truth in season five. And I've played the truth all the way up until season five, and they just didn't believe me. So maybe they just really won't. They'll be like, oh, crocodile tears, as if. Yeah, well, and it's hard. And we saw in the early episodes of this season where people really did want to believe that, that, that Reggie was being honest and truthful, but then there's that piece of them to go, no, she's so manipulative and she's, she's never done anything really that's not for self-gratification. I just can't believe yeah. that. Yeah, I love that people wanted to believe. It kind of gives, restores my faith in humanity. Yeah. So, lots happening there. We also saw um, another twist, because that's what Bevan loves to do with us. And um, we saw a hookup with Anna and Henry that I don't think anyone <laughs> saw coming. No, no one saw that coming. I mean, even when I read the script, I was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> I remember going up to Abby going, mm. You've got some love scenes. <laughs> <laughs> and that awkward, heart, huh? you know, that awkward wake up in the morning with a bit of a sore head going, oh, what have I done? <laughs> what happened? I was here? a bit jealous. I was like, Tim, he's all right. He does like to have his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind running my fingers down that chest. <laughs> Sorry, my husband. But, <laughs> but um, yes, I think it was quite a... Uh, you know, they've found comfort in each other's loneliness uh, yeah. or, or, or feeling, I guess, as a minority or, or outcast because of both their situations, whilst very different, both being minorities in, in, and they've, you know, I think maybe misplaced 
something in, the, in their well, life. Well, you know, I can, Renji also has a bit of that theme going on. I mean, there's, they were acting out of heartbreak, and Regina only ever acted out of heartbreak. So I guess I can, I can relate. Can relate. So we'll see what happens there. God knows where that's going to go next week at the finale. Um, and then we saw, we, you know, we've had a really tough episode for, for Jack this, this episode. Yeah. Um, Great stuff for Jack. Absolutely Great devastating. Um, with obviously what, what Sir Richard or, or Dickie did to, to him publicly to humiliate him. Yep. And then his downfall from there. Yep. Um, but also trying to piece that together. Whether he possibly had a hand in... I and know because he has scratches his on his scratches, hands. He's having flashbacks. And he didn't remember what happened, and he has some little flashes of Regina and their time together on the riverbank in the night time. So yeah, yes, yeah. Um, so and you know, I think that um, you know, the we didn't see that coming again. Like we never see anything coming. But you know, Craig's ability to to play that to play that and to play it so authentically too, and the and the humiliation that Jack. Yeah. has you know kept but also to those that respect him like Roy and <clears throat> and Frank and, and and Doris just not knowing what to say but wanting to know that it doesn't change how we think of you I know and he was he did such a beautiful job Craig I said that to him when we were filming those apps because he, he and I had a, quite a bit of filming to do together it was such a great a great opportunity for him to really show us how amazing he is yeah and then I think last but not least, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, and I'm sure all you, I know you fans are because I read all your comments, that maybe Olivia might finally have her, her happily ever after with Matthew. Yeah. Third time lucky. <laughs> Third time lucky. I know, isn't she gorgeous? I know, she deserves love, Olivia. Totally does. Yeah. Again, quite an, another twist and turn. I think at the, at the time I thought, oh no, Matt's breaking up with her. <laughs> Just gonna... Well, first she thought he was into Anna. <laughs> Because that's what that looked like, and then it was like, oh, it's not Anna, it's Olivia, and it's so good that he was—he didn't—he wasn't put off by the fact that she was a single mum with a child. Isn't that no, beautiful? and particularly in that period as well. Particularly in that period, yeah, yeah. And I guess it's also, you know, uh, Matthew's character coming in has really brought some some solace and some comfort for Elizabeth or Lizzie with, with yeah. losing Douglas and her seeing so much of Douglas in him yeah, and yeah. wanting him to stick around. And then they've got that. You know, that family resemblance. Yes. That real family. The real one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. I remember asking Robert about it and he's like, Oh Conrad might come in and I was like, Conrad, you're like an all saints reunion. Yeah. It, it is. It, it yeah. really is. Yeah. People have noticed that too. But no, I think he's been a, a welcomed addition to the to the place to call home family this year. Yeah. And um, lovely. And a great storyline there. Let's just hope it is Olivia's happily ever after, but we never know with Bevan. What Never he's going to do. Then how many more curveballs can he throw? Seven. So a whole app to get through. Whole, whole 60 <laughs> minutes. A whole finale where it all will come to light. Um, so I guess with the finale coming, and I'm not going to probe you for spoilers because I have your publicist sitting right next to me who will kill me if I, uh, if I, if I allow you to reveal. She'll leap across. <laughs> leap across in front of me here. And suddenly the interview will be over. Um, what can we, what can fans... Again, without giving away any spoilers, expect from a finale. Is it a, is it a, is it the finale that we're used to, or the, the ending that we're used to from Bevan? Will we be shocked? Do you know? I think he he kind of goes back and forth because some of the seasons have ended with a cliffhanger, and some have ended with resolution. I think the end of season four, there was a lot of resolution. Um, you know, Reggie ended up in the asylum. The end of season two was a cliffhanger. End of season three was a cliffhanger. So it could go either way. I don't think he's afraid of either. You know, I think you can be, you can fall into the trap of always feeling like you have to leave everyone hanging, you know, until the next season. But Bevan's not afraid of that. And I don't even know if the fans are addicted to that either. However, they do tend to love the drama that Reggie brought, the will she, won't she, is she, isn't she drama. That yeah. That kind of played out for the whole of that season. And was, for Regina, it was like, a little mini cliffhanger, I suppose, kind of almost in every second ep, it was like, is she good or is she bad? So, and I'm like sure it. in you know, there's no way Reggie's going to go out, even in even in even in her death, without some little cliffhanger or some little drama or <laughs> some little walk. drama. Yeah, you can't you can't have Reggie go quietly in that way. No, no, no. Even though she, I, I do think she, you know, redeemed herself, and I think that. She made resolutions in, in numerous ways. I still think that um, she did. That big scene 
with Sarah in the cottage where she's laying with her, have, you know, she has a headache, and she, that was her big scene. That was the big moment that they gave me the actor where that you could really explore the interior of that character's mind, which is great because I think she's been such a, an intriguing character, especially with her flip. I think people were never quite sure what was in her mind, and finally that big scene, she she kind of let it all out. She's like, I'm I'm just all I have left is my guilt. It's kind of sad. It was that sad and tragic. It really was. Mm -hmm. It really was. Um, and we talked earlier in the season when we were when I was on set, um, particularly about getting into into character and having the, the stark difference in clothing and the oh, way yeah. that Regina yeah. held herself. Yeah. And um, I know all the fans have commented that over. So I wanted to touch back on it yeah. in. And did that help you in, in this role, in this new type of regeneration? Oh, absolutely. And as everybody knows, I'm obsessed with shoes. And the shoes they gave me were just dreadful. <laughs> so so that, really, that really shaped how I moved. Suddenly I wasn't wearing heels anymore. I was wearing these really sad little shuffling moccasin-y things. And I think you know, I saw you had these, br these beige yeah. brown slip-ons with a little bit of um, stretchy like elastic. Yeah. Yeah, my vanity took a beating, let's just be honest. But, yeah, it, it really informed, and I talk about that a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm a very much, I, I do the both the outside in and inside out work as an actor, and I'm very much impacted by my physical world where I am. And so my clothing really shapes my performance a lot of the time because, you know, those, those sack white dresses I wore at the beginning of season five really brought you down. I really did. It was, it was hard not to be completely kind of flattened out by that that clothing experience, and then of course the shoes that made me change the way I walked and the way I held myself. And I also w worked a lot with the notion of being broken, and and how that physically, you know, I, when you're broken, you can no longer kind of stand up at all. And so I I worked a lot with that. Yeah, and I think we saw a lot of that too in. The mundane tasks, I guess, of like gardening, and a lot of time when we we'd find we, when we find Reggie, she was gardening or she was cooking or she was just doing something that was, I guess, um, very I, I would say like mindful or like meditative almost yep. in its state because obviously and, lonely. and loneliness, yeah, yeah. I didn't get to act with many people in season five. <laughs> he was always gardening. He was <laughs> always gardening with these really funny gardening shoes. Thanks, thanks, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and a little apron, and but yeah. we did see on the fate day, um, sort of almost like a, a re, you know a reappearance of the Reggie that everyone's used to. Yes, but and I, I knew about that. They kind of said to me she was throughout the season she was going to graduate back into her old glamorous look by the end, and there was a real lot of pathos in that. Is that on her final day, she wore that fabulous red suit that she'd worn before. It was one of her old outfits, her, one of the old Reggie outfits, and she did her hair the same and her makeup the same. Um, uh, the only difference was her hair, because that was a bit like, it was, there was a poetry to it, that that was the end, but she kind of pulled herself back to some kind of beauty and dignity, and that was the end of her story. Yeah. Um, what I thought was magnificent, and, and all, all credit to you, was that even though we saw Regina come back to her state and come back to that place, you still knew that she was a different Regina. That's it was a different Regina behind those eyes. Yes, she looked the same as in particularly in that dress, but I think as audience watched, they were they still felt even though visually they were looking at the Reggie they used to, they looked at a reformed or a different. Well, that's good. Thank version you. Of they're, those, they're the kind of things you can never be sure of as a performer. You just have to kind of hope and leave it to the theatre gods that they'll be kind and smile on you. So that's good. Awesome. Well, what I'm going to do is, because I'm not going to take over asking all the questions, I'm going to throw to all of your amazing questions because they're so great. So I'm going to start with Lucy Anderson. Lucy's got a long question, so bear with me. Hello, Jenny. A loyal fan here from Maryland, USA. Hello, Lucy. I've been hooked on this show for several years. When your character appeared, Regina completely freaked me out. <laughs> you play evil so well. I had to search for you and to, then to, to watch you in an interview and found a lovely lady to my relief. This made me watching your performances easier to take and so much more respect for your talent grew. My question, season four, the scene where you were holding little David while you were yelling at Sarah, yep. the little baby's facial expressions <laughs> were incredible. 
Did this happen in real time or was it cut edited into the scene later? That was that was a, a hilarious story, I have to say. I don't know if I've talked about it ever publicly, but I was I was very nervous doing that scene because I was holding this very young baby and the mother was really close by. <laughs> and I was scared that I was gonna drop the baby because I because I, it was such a heightened scene and, and sometimes you go into the acting tunnel and you can kind of just lose your grip a bit with reality, especially doing scenes like that. So I was really scared and then they, it came time, for, and I didn't drop the baby, which was a huge relief, and then it came time for them to shoot the close-up of the baby and they were like, could you just scream a bit of that dialogue now? <laughs> so I'm all in verbal and I'm screaming, you know, whatever those horrible lines were. And the baby just kept looking at me going, <laughs> and then they were like, sorry, this isn't working. Do it. Could you do it, <laughs> do it again? And I'd be like, ar, ar, with the whole baby, the baby like, like, I don't know, I don't know why I was doing it. They were like, please try and make the baby cry. And I'm like, I'm trying everything I can. And it just never, just I don't know why. I don't know if it was because I'm a mum and I was, you know, like kind of my motherly way was being transferred into that baby. But that baby was never going to cry. It was very strange. I mean, really funny. And I think the parents will find that funny, relaying that at the baby's story. Yeah, me baby. screamed in the face by Regina in her <laughs> darkest moment. Yeah, in her like, darkest moment. And the baby's just like, ah. So soothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so I hope that answers your question. The baby's expressions were hilarious for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> um, this is from uh, Kareen Witcherman. What a shame that we will not see any more Regina. What a fabulous character you portrayed her so very, very well. Maybe there is a twin Regina in the works that could spring into action and avenge her sister's demise. Fingers crossed something can be constructed by our imaginative writers, Q, Michael, uh, Q Beverly. Well, thank you. That's a very nice sentiment. Um, I'm sure you know that, I, that Regina had a sister and her name was Elaine who met her end in Darwin. Look, I did in jest often suggest that Arlene hadn't died, but nobody ever took me seriously. <laughs> so, so I've really tried that option and nobody went for it. Um, but you know, please, if you'd like to suggest it, I'd be more than happy to um, revisit the world of a place to go home as Regina's. Now the Southern twin. Production Office is gonna get a whole <laughs> lot of mail. <laughs> Yeah. Saying, here's my idea for, for, yeah, yeah, for, for, for the future. Um, this one's from Kelly Watson. Was Regina your was was Regina your favourite character to play? She was so complex and you brought her to life and will you miss her? She was my favourite character so far. She was. I mean, I had her for f such a long time on screen and, and I don't think I've ever played a character for that long. I mean, yes, I played, I played Paula on All Saints for 100 episodes. I think it was a rack over 100 episodes, but this was over a longer period of time. And I have to say, playing a bad guy is ridiculously fun. <laughs> so, so yes. And look, she wasn't only a bad guy, and we know all this. She was incredibly complicated. And as I've talked about before, she would play different temperatures and different personalities in many different scenes. And so I was constantly stimulated as an actor. And then the beautiful gift of the role was the flip in season five. It was almost like they gave me a new character to play, and that's an actor's dream. You know, after playing her for f four seasons, suddenly I got to just completely reinvent her the way she moved, the way she felt, you know, what motivated her, all changed. So that was great, and I, I feel so grateful that I've been given that opportunity. I don't know if I'll be given that again in my career because it's so rare to ever be able to you know for a creator to say this is your character in this season and then she's over here and then the next season like she's going to reinvent herself so it was yes it's been my favorite role to play um this one's from karen nelson the more i watch the series the more i could see which is hashtagging which i talked about earlier regina misunderstood i haven't gone to extremes that uh, I haven't gone to the extremes that she did anything, but for now, I have a better understanding of people who deeply want to feel accepted. Perhaps they feel they need to do certain things to get attention from those they admire or are infatuated with. It's actually quite sad, and I can't imagine how hard it must be for them, but you helped me see 
that side of this psychological disorder and more clearly I felt for her inner torture. You did a wonderful job of playing the depth and breadth of this woman's personality and mood swings. I would think it was a fun challenge to play that type of character and know the creator wanted to see such differences season to season. You definitely did an awesome job, but what I'd like to know is, did you find playing Regina draining emotionally and mentally in some of the scenes? I 100% found it draining in some of the scenes. Um, I think like most actors, I put incredible pressure on myself and and it's like, it's a double-edged sword. We all long for these big moments, you know, in our work, we're longing for kind of a meaty scene. And when they give you the scene, you're just petrified that, you know, you won't get there or you won't do it justice. And so I've had many nights, sleepless nights, agonizing over, you know, was I gonna do well? And was I, it was, it was, a, it was a, a really steep mountain to climb and it was intimidating, but I'm so glad that I did it. You know, I think that's the, the case with all huge challenges in, in your work life or in your life in general. You're frightened of them and then when you reach the mountaintop and cross over the other side, you're like, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I went through all that. <laughs> you hate it what's happening. Because, you know, I love to just have a good time as most people who know me know that I just, you know, I like happiness and jokes and whatever. And so it, to push me into those dark places it was hard. I kind of had to coach myself through it a bit. A bit like this is going to be over by the end of today. We're going to be through all this really hard stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one's from Patrick Gallagher. Oh my God. I need to ask her this. Such a dedicated fan, Patrick. <laughs> yes. We all have been personally saddened by Reggie's death. Many of us even wore hashtag red for Reggie. I saw, I saw the red for Reggie. It was so touching. So touching. Um, which Regina did you enjoy playing more, the evil scheming Regina or the reformed post-asylum Reggie? That's a really revealing question, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, hmm, how do I want to be the scene? Did you like what to be a good I, person yeah, or a bad, a bad one? Person. Which, which should I admit to? Look, I liked playing a bad Regina best. That would be my... I mean, yes, I enjoyed the challenge of, of reinventing her, but the fun where I had all the fun, wasn't she was, you know, she was fun. She just did all the things that we're not allowed to do in, in real life. And that was good. Like kill people. <laughs> <laughs> shoot police in the head. Well, yeah, shoot people in the face <laughs> and, you know, acting impetuously, badly. Um, no, no, not, not obviously, well, you know, yes, that's fun to make play make-believe, but, you know, it's, yes, I, I enjoyed Evil Reggie a lot. Um, this one's from Nicole Ann. What did you think of the, this is Red for Reggie tribute. We are all going to miss you and poor little reformed Reggie so much. You played an amazing character to make us feel sad for her after all she had done. Oh, well, thank you. Because I guess I worried that, as I said before, that nobody really would be sad because they wouldn't believe her. And Bevan's like, you know, I want to explore the concept of forgiveness. I want to explore... The concept of say you know the enemies we have in war when the war is over that we can forgive and and move on and that's kind of what i want to do with the regina storyline and i thought i was like well, i hope i hope <laughs> i hope i'm not just so you know entrenched in that evil persona that people can't forgive so i'm i'm glad to hear that because that's that's what i was wanting and people did people are, it's we were saying this earlier, the, the flip from, you know, managing social on this and people hating yeah, Reggie yeah, and wanting Reggie dead to be gone. and like coming up with ways to kill her, or to kill her <laughs> off, to a flip yeah. post season five. No, we don't want Reggie to go. <laughs> I know. I was like, you guys want to be gone, right? This is what I thought. <laughs> like enough already. That Regina, she's heinous. But, um, yeah. This one's from Carol Hockey. Hello Jenny, Regina was one of the best written characters I've seen recent years on television and also certainly one of the most complex. You did her justice, your performance was extraordinary and I will miss Regina. My question is, what is next for you? Will I see you on anything? You are truly one of the greatest Aussie actresses she is. That's a hard one because, you know, I've spoken to my agent about the, the character that I would play next and you can't follow Reggie with just any old character so I, when we talk about it I'm a bit like 
yeah, no, not after playing Regina. I like, don't want to do that. Or you know, so it's it's going to be it's going to be hard to match. Big shoes to fill, Reggie. Yeah. Big red heels. Yeah. Um, this is from uh, Antonella. Hi, Jenny. I cried like a baby on Sunday. It was like a dear friend had died. I loved watching Regina evolve over the last six years. You never knew what she'd do next. She'll be sorely missed. However, my question is, did you have any input on Regina's journey or was it all the writers? Oh, that's a lovely comment. Thank you. Um, I didn't. I didn't have input. Regina is, is Bevan's creation through and through. Um, I think he did an amazing job. I think she's... She's really grown a lot from when we first saw her in season one. And, and what was really interesting about the character was that she just was coming in for five eps. And then she was just coming in for, you know, another five, I think, in season two. And then they added season three. And, that, you know, so I, I think I think they kind of, the writers grew along with her. I think we grew together. I think, I think they were influenced by the choices I made sometimes when I played her. And then, of course, I was faithful to what I was given, and, and it was like a lovely dance. You know, the writers would come up to me and be like, oh, I was really surprised by how you did this, and that's kind of going to inform, which I think is beautiful about television, and that's, that's the, the way that it should be, is that, you know, we inform each other, and we all create her. I mean, I've always said Regina is a creation of, you know, Wizzy just hair and makeup, and Lisa's costuming, as you know, Fiona's production design, as much as she's me. I mean, we all put the clay on and create that character. And yeah. of course, then the writers and Bevan. It is amazing how, how much work and how many hands yep. go into each of the characters yep. in this show. Yep. Absolutely. Um, this one's from Rebecca Jackson. Jenny, when you first joined the show, did Bevan tell you exactly how evil your character would be, or was it discussed over the series? And was she supposed to be that bad, a, a, a murderer, etc.? I love to hate you, but on the occasion felt a tad sympathy for her. Thank you for making Regina and a place to call home one of my all-time favourites. You will be sorely missed, but I'm sure there's a revenge twist somewhere. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. So you did say a tad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you were like... I'm not going to be hugely sorry. Um, no, I'm joking. Thank, thank you. That's a very nice thing to say. Um, now remind me. Of so, the was, did did Bevan tell you how oh, old he was going to get? Did he tell me? He didn't tell me. No, and I think I think he shouldn't have. I think he just he just said to me, you know, the way you captured her, her entitlement at the beginning, a bit like I feel she felt owed, was kind of I think what got me the role, and then the rest just unfolded. And I'm, I'm always happy just to go for it. Whatever I'm given, I'm just going to go. I don't, I don't kind of concern myself really with how I'm perceived publicly. I just don't. No, actually, speaking of which, going a bit off tangent here, one of the promo shoots that we did to promote the series, if you remember, you had to throw the glass at the wall in yeah. like and we only got one take at it, yeah. but the excitement that you had to be the one that <laughs> got to actually smash yeah. a glass oh, yeah. in a fit of anger, yeah. it's like you yeah. have this lovely, happy person offset all of a sudden puts on the Reggie shoes yeah. and she's like, yeah. I'm going to smash yeah. this. Yeah, because we've all got a dark side, don't we? We just have to access it. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to see the immediate... And then you finish like, oh, that was so fun. I was like, oh, we're going to go have some chocolate lollies now. Bye. <laughs> um, this one's from um, Virginia Stephen McDonald. You played Regina and made Regina what she became on screen was a real character that we could not get enough of, but we all hated it and secretly loved her at the same time. I just wish that Regina would have a future role and a place to call home. She could have been so much more. If you had the chance to develop her, where would you go? I think I would have liked her to find true love outside of George. I think that obsession, um, it ruled her. And I, and I think it would have been great to release her from that. And so that's that's what I would have liked to have seen. Her and receive love in return. Yeah, yeah, to kind of move away from that obsession and yes, and, and give love and receive love. And, and you never saw anybody love her, ever. So you never saw that. And, and I think love is such a healing force for all of us and it kind of keeps us alive. 
So if you were to be poetic and big and kind of philosophical about it, she didn't have the thing that keeps us alive. So mm. maybe that's why she... And she also didn't have self-love as well because no. of the guilt that she was yeah. harboring. So yeah, she was, maybe she was hashtag unloved. That's even more tragic, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Very sad. Because George never loved her. No. Bad George. She was an arrangement. <laughs> Bad George. <laughs> I always say that. I'm like, terrible Brett. How dare you ask someone to marry you? You know that they're in love with you. She just asked them anyway for your own ends. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. It's like, what do you mean? I'm always good, aren't I? I'm like, yeah, not in that regard. Oh, no one saw that side. That's I know, really felt sorry for me. Oh, me. I love it. I'm still, I'm, I feel like I'm still her. Um, no one understood that. It's like, you know, date some person that's just desperate for you and then go, actually, let's get married because I feel like it really helped my career. <laughs> And that still makes me a good person. <laughs> yeah, George, come on, own up. <laughs> um, this one's from Joanne Easton. First up, wonderful performance, Jenny, especially this season. Congrats to you and all the writers on the creation of such a nuanced character. My question is, all the women of A Place to Call Home are trying to find their place in what has always been a man's world. Do you see Regina's scheming as her way of just trying to find her place? Yes. Definitely, definitely. I mean, we know what Regina wanted. She wanted a place to call home as well, herself. She wanted Ash Park and George and possibly children and she wanted to belong. That was all she wanted, so yes. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Good observation too. A lot, all the, the yeah. lead females are yeah. trying to find their, yeah. their place. They're very strong though, every, every single one of them. Um, this one's from Rachel Caitlin. You played Regina better than anyone could have. I hated her, I loved her, I admired her, and I was totally intrigued by her all at once. Everyone loved to hate her, and everyone loved to hate and hate and loved to hate Regina. Bravo. What did you love and hate most about playing her? Well, I, th I think I may have talked about it earlier, really. I mean, I, I had a love-hate reaction to the big stuff that they gave me, to be honest, because I was just scared of it. So I was, I'd, I'd get the scenes, especially in season four, you know, with the baby and the killing the cop, and it was like, this is like a great tragedy. <laughs> oh, you know, like I could just be a laughing stock. People would be like, oh, boo, go, no, <laughs> like dry again. So I kind of, I hated the pressure, but then I loved it when I did the work and I prepared and, and I I don't have to go to some dark places and sometimes the dark places feel real and I remember when I was filming the Sergeant Taylor stuff the Syrian crisis was really at a peak and so there were so many people losing their lives then and there and, and I remember kind of being in touch with that tragedy, so it was it was hard. That was a hard sequence of scenes to recover from at the end of that. And look, there was a lot of darkness in season five underneath that, that sometimes I would kind of feel it dragging me down a little bit and that was also hard. I wouldn't say that I hated it though because when, when we create art, we have to embrace the light and the dark we just have to, otherwise we won't have any art, because all sunshine is, it's not true. So I felt relief a bit that, that I could go there and, and ultimately all you want to be as an artist is, is somebody who interprets the world authentically. And so I can't say that I hated it, I just could say that I found it hard and I found it heavy and sorrowful. But there was a lot about Regina that I loved. I mean, I loved getting married. I had loved that. <laughs> I loved having an affair with a hot cop. That was great. I loved the costumes that I got to wear. I loved pouring tea. I loved <laughs> kind of flouncing around, driving fancy cars. I mean, look, I was a kid in a huge dollhouse. That's what it was a bit like. 
it was like somebody was, you know, it was like I'd, I was still six, but I was now an adult, and it was like I was that six-year-old, and everyone was saying, here's a real house that you can go in, like a cubby house, and we can give you all props, and you can talk to people that are never going to break character, and you can believe that you're having a tea party, and that was kind of what it was like. It was like the fusion of, of adulthood and childhood all in one go, and I think you only get that in period drama because they create the world for you that's so different to the real world. Whereas when you do contemporary drama, the real world and the artistic world kind of merge and blend and you don't get that lovely sense of, of, of being transported to somewhere else. Speaking of props, a lot of people have asked this, what was actually in those little morphine bottles? Was it oh. just water? Yeah, yes, <laughs> it was just pink, pink water, and they're like, stop swinging that. So a lot, you'll be, you'll be off your trolley. In real life, that's <laughs> so. To be, I should. I was always, no, I wasn't. I just guzzled it, didn't I? <laughs> but she had a really severe habit. Um, look, and I, the, the other thing about props is, I think I came up with that river stone for season five, that kind of touchstone, and that was important to me as a performer because. I didn't want her to have the tradition of the Bible as her little thing that kept her grounded. I wanted her to have something else and a memento of the fact that everything was gone and that, you know, she'd been reduced to this incredibly plain, simple person and she needed to remember that all that old Regina was gone. And so it was, it was important to me that I used that prop to keep me grounded. To keep yeah. her on her path to the touchstone. Yeah. Um, next question: What is your relationship with Marta like in real life? Considering your battle on the screen, it's lovely in real life. <laughs> I love Marta. Hopefully, we're gonna have a drink after this. Um, yeah, no, it's it's she's a wonderful scene partner. She really pulls you up. You know, you have to bring, put your game, you bring your game face tuned to every scene that you play with her, which I love her for. I love that she demands greatness. Um, she's, a, you know, she's the leader that we need to have and she's made us kind of bring it, you know, to the show, to make the show how the, the amazing show that it is. So yeah, our relationship in real life is great. We're both mums. We bond a lot over that. We're both working mums. and. You know, she's got a wicked sense of humour <laughs> that I enjoy. So, yeah. So, it's, it's, all, it's all good, guys. They're not really fighting offset. Yeah, and we're not method. We really do have dinner <laughs> together from time to time. They're not storming <laughs> off into different, you know, into Yeah, we're not doing Betty and Joan or, you know, we're not, we're not doing... Although I used to joke with her, was my joke. I'm like, which one are you? <laughs> when I was watching for you. Yeah. Um, here's, a, here's a random question. Will you be popping up in Wentworth? That's so funny. <laughs> Why? Well, because I know Celia and Jamie. I think that I think the photo from the other week's making the rounds. They're like Which photo? There's a photo of you guys. Hmm. Maybe at the actors or what was that? Just recently I've seen it going around and it's like oh, Jenny Bad's with the well, it's, with girl. It's funny when I I've just been in America for the last couple of months and I, I've met some die-hard Wentworth fans, like so crazy the men, and they're like, you know the people from Wentworth, seriously? And I was like, yes. And so when I got to the actors, I went up to Pamela Rabe and Celia Island, and I was like, come on, let's do a selfie, you guys. And I private messaged the selfie to those crazy Wentworth fans, and they were beside themselves. So that'd be funny. Rick, what, 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 what would they want me to be? New Wentworth? prisoner, new meat, new blood. We need new blood. Pop you in there. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? Sad Reggie died before she could have been like an old lady. We could have had, we could have had like, a, you know how the Americans have the crossovers with the imagine, superhero shows? Imagine Reggie. We could have done a place to call home went with crossover. How do you think Reggie would have stood, stacked up? I'm sure I think she would have become the new villain. She would have taken on the freak. Wow. Yeah. So. Let me know if you'd like me to play. <laughs> let's give it. Let's let's start putting together a pitch, guys. <laughs> you write it. <laughs> yes, do it. Um, and I've asked you this before, but for those, because a lot of people are asking it, favorite scene. My favorite scene. That's hard. There's been a lot. There's been a lot. Favorite scene. Whether I mean, you know, there've been the big heavy scenes. I can't say the scene with the baby was my favourite scene, even though it was probably the hardest scene that I've had. 
probably the scene in the red dress in season four um, after the Prime Minister's dinner when she basically just reveals her hurt to George. I think that was my favourite scene because finally she got to let go and just be sad and vulnerable. And I guess I, I really was happy to play that. It was kind of nice. It was a relief because there's so much of Virginia that was all kind of you know posy and keeping up appearances and a lot of bravado, and all the bravado got to just fall away in that scene. So she really let her guard down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here we go. Look about this too. Was it really you on the table on the <laughs> on the autopsy table? Is that what? Is that the, yeah. Well, hang on, we want to clarify whether yes. they mean under the sheet or when they're doing the autopsy. Let's go with when they're doing the autopsy. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> look, here I am today. I'm still here, alive. Um, we, they didn't really cut out Jenny's lungs. No, they didn't really. Um, no, that wasn't me. That would be like, well, we're under the sheet and we put it, stand in for you. But obviously, yes, when I'm on the table and Sarah's whispering in my ear, that was really me. And same as obviously same as when we pulled you out of the water. Yes, they tell they told me I had a very um, visible uh, pulse in my neck that caused trouble. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, I'm so alive, you guys. As an actor, <laughs> stop breathing. Yeah, stop. Could you stop your heartbeat just for this <laughs> bit? <laughs> um, this one's actually from um, Andy Munro. He wants to say hello from Utah. Hello, Utah. I was happy to be involved with the group who helped save the show after series two. What do you think about the power of the fans who helped bring the show back? I've never seen anything like it. Not in Australia. I think it's incredible. And I, I have only the fans to thank for the fact that I got to work, you know, for three more seasons on A Place to Call Home and I got to play Reggie out. So, I, so thank you. I mean, it's, it's all because of you. The fans have been incredible in the gift that they gave us. Yeah, it's an, and it continues. It's phenomenal. Yeah, and our, you know, every, we continue to grow. I mean, I know the show is being viewed by more and more people all over the world. So, you know, unfortunately, I don't think the fans can bring Reggie back. But, you know, I so appreciate the love that I've, you know, people have tweeted to me and messaged me on Instagram. And it's been wonderful to, to kind of get the feedback on, um, on how much, you know, people have valued my performance, which is all you want as an actor. And I better let you go because you do have you do have somewhere to be, and where I am holding you up. But before we go, is there one last message that you want to say to fans? Being this might be the last time that we that I get to chat to you on Facebook Live um, on the eve of the finale without giving any spoilers away. With the finale. Oh, without giving any spoilers away. You can't away. give any spoilers. Oh, no. Look, look no. at me how they can come and slap me. Well, you know, you will get you will get to see more of Regina's last moments in the finale. I think that's what everyone's been waiting for. And you will know in the end what happened and what she was thinking and wanting, which is good, which will be a relief, I think, for everyone. It'll be a surprise. And it was even a surprise for me. I mean, I knew what my journey was, but when I saw the other characters' reactions, that surprised me too. That was like, I would never have seen that would never have predicted that. And I guess my final, my message to the fans is, I feel like, you know, playing a villain, it's, you don't expect <laughs> any fan love when you play a villain. And so it's been great. It's been great and funny and, and surprising to, to get great, all that feedback. And I know that you've loved to hate me. I know you haven't really hated me. I understand. Um, and I loved to be hated. <laughs> and then and then I was really happy that you forgave me. Forgave her. Well, thank you so much. As always, it has been an absolute delight. We've enjoyed, the Foxdale family enjoy working with you immensely. Oh, yeah. And um, we're so thrilled and proud of, of everything that you've delivered. And Reggie delivers this season. And we just cannot wait for all the fans to see next Sunday night's episode. It's like our special Christmas gift to all on Christmas yes, Eve. Yes, Christmas. Look, we've got the tree in the, the background. The tree, twinkling in the background. 
And um, you know, I also love that Regina rides again. The hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. I remember coming up with it like right at the beginning, and, and it's funny because of all the funny horse riding that I had to do. Um, but I guess Regina will not ride again. That's she's going to hang up her riding crop for good. Yeah. But thanks for being with me on that journey. And thank you for being so gracious and for always being so accommodating to fans too. Being able to do things like this and chat to them. I know how much they appreciate it and it gives them that little bit of, you know, extra that not that, that not everyone does. So I know that, that they really do appreciate that. It was my pleasure. Thank you. I'll let you get to I'll let you get to your, your function. Um and everybody, this Sunday. This Sunday. Christmas, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. What better thing to do at eight thirty than who sit down it? and find out who killed, who killed Reggie. Reggie. Who done it? <laughs> is it is it so Richard? Is it Dicky? We don't know, but tune in. Thank yeah. you so much, Jenny. Bye. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Thanks.